Hey guys, can you hear me? Hi teacher. Hello, how are you? ¿Cómo están? Muy bien, gracias. Qué bueno, qué bueno. Me alegra ver los chicos. Welcome to the class. Thank you very much for joining. I don't know what happens with the camera. It looks like a little bit blurry, but I think you're able to hear me, right? ¿Me escuchan bien, verdad? Sí, teacher. Yes, teacher. Muy bien. So thank you very much for joining. Welcome to the class. This is your session number um, 14, right? 14 um, out of 16 sessions that we're going to have together, okay? So let me go ahead and share the screen with you guys. Give me one sec. Okay, let's see. Session 14. Okay, so guys, tell me, what do you remember from yesterday's class? What do you remember for, from yesterday's class? ¿Qué se recuerdan de ayer? ¿Qué vimos? Let's see. Was, uh -huh. where? Very good. We studied the two forms of the verb be, right? Was and where. Excellent. Very good. Um, what else besides um, the two forms of the verb being past um, did we study? ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más se recuerda? Check your notes, okay? I just want to see um, if you have, uh, you know, checked your notes or if you have studied. Okay, we studied a little bit on uh, was and where, and also we talked a little about um, the WH questions, right? WH questions, and we discussed a little bit on the difference between the information questions and the um, yes, no questions, right? And we said that we have those type of questions, I mean, in the different tenses. And we talked a, a little bit about those questions yesterday. They were included actually in the, in the, here in the conversation, right, that we started yesterday. ¿Cuántos llegaron, este, uh, entraron a la plataforma y dejaron sus comentarios en, en los audios y en los videos? Mm -hmm. Did you do it? Lo hicieron ayer. Ok. Acuérdense que esas secciones siempre las van a encontrar en todos los, los niveles, ¿verdad? Todos los niveles traen ese video y abajo pues traen instrucciones para que usted puedan, ustedes puedan ingresar la información, ¿verdad? De acuerdo a los ejemplos que le da el instructor. So, um, what else? Yesterday, as Anita was saying, uh, we started a little bit on what and where, and we were also a, making sure that we understood, right, um, the different subject pronouns that we use with uh, where and the ones that we use with was, right? So we said that whenever we're using the subject pronoun I, you, he, she, it, and singular nouns, we're going to use the, the form uh, I'm sorry, I, he, she, it, and uh, third person singular, we're going to use was, right? And then for um, you, we, and they, we're going to use where, okay? In the negative form, we have the same thing. The only uh, difference is that you're going to um, choose if you're going to um, use the short form or if you're going to use the contraction, I mean, the, the short form or the long form, right? The full form wasn't or was not, and weren't or were not, right? That was about uh, the affirmative and negative form. Also, we started some examples yesterday, right, with was and wasn't and were and weren't. And uh, here is where we stopped, okay? And we said that uh, whenever we want to talk about state in past, ¿verdad? Porque es un verbo para especificar estado, okay? So we used uh, the verb be. And some of you were reading some of the sentences, right? Eh, también, ah, solamente se me había olvidado ayer decirles que cuando me estaba leyendo la última, they were in Korea in, a, in 1998. Remember that dates, las fechas las, las separamos, ¿verdad? En dos cifras, ¿ok? Si tenemos 1998, ¿verdad? Eh, no vamos a decir 1998, ¿verdad? No. We just separate the, 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 the number, right, in half. And we read 1998, okay? So whenever you want to say the numbers in English, uh, especially the years, right? You do it like that. 
And uh, also, I was asking you, right, very specific questions, okay, very specific questions. Uh, where were you uh, Sunday morning, right? Where were you yesterday in the afternoon, okay, etc. And you did a great job on that, okay, so thank you very much. Now, guys, after checking this, I would like to have a combination, right, of the things that we have studied last week and also the verb B that we started, uh, that we have started today, okay? So the question that we're going to be working with, it's um, what did you do yesterday, right? What did you do yesterday? And well, among other questions, entre otras preguntas que les voy a hacer, okay? So the question, uh, cuando nosotros preguntamos, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿Dónde naciste? ¿Verdad? ¿Dónde naciste? Okay, so, o ¿dónde nació usted? ¿Verdad? So you ask, where... Um, where were you born, right? Where were you born? Donde naciste, okay? Or if you want to ask directly, right? Were you born in the U.S., okay? Or when were you born in El Salvador, right? Naciste en El Salvador, okay? Entonces, if you want to know, right, where the person comes from, you can ask, right? Where were you born? A donde naciste? Or you can ask directly, right? Were you born in El Salvador? Were you born in the US? Okay. Now, down below you have, was your brother born in 1984? Was your brother born in 1994? 84, I'm sorry. So whenever you want uh, to ask, right, and include the year, okay, you're going to do it like that. Was your sister born in 1989? Okay. Uh, was my father born in 1963? Okay. Were your parents born in income, right? Were your parents born in income? Okay. What city were you, were they, um, what city were they born in, right? En que ciudad, verdad? We have several questions. Hay varias preguntas, okay? Uh, the first one, cuando yo pregunto directamente, were you born in El Salvador? Yes or no, right? Was your brother born in 1984? Si yo pregunto por el año específico y por alguien específicamente, I would do it like that, ¿verdad? Were your parents born in uh, income, right? En este caso, acerca de mis padres, right? And where were you born? ¿A dónde naciste? When was he born? ¿Dónde nació, verdad? What city were they born in? Okay. ¿En qué, en qué este, ciudad nacieron? ¿verdad? Si ustedes se fijan en la primera, chicos, ¿ok? Es bien específica. La segunda no, ¿ok? It's like, it's very general, it's like very open, ¿ok? Entonces, ¿hay alguna pregunta con el vocabulario que tenemos en la sección de questions with uh, past of verb be? ¿Alguna pregunta, chicos? No. Eh, déjenme preguntarles también, ¿hay alguna pregunta de la plataforma? que ustedes este, hayan encontrado o que no han podido contestar aún? ¿No? Ok. No hay problema. Vamos a ver. Now, um, also, one important detail, right? Esta parte de acá, chicos, eso está aquí en el video. Acuérdense, ¿verdad? Lo que está acá es lo que está en el video. Así que eh, pueden hacer la referencia, ¿verdad? Cuando eh, se metan a la plataforma y se van directamente al video. ¿Ok? ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más había hay que como repasar o, o revisar en cuanto a simple past, right? Eh, en este caso, pues, el instructor nos hace ahí una invitación a que revisemos lo que es la pronunciación con las negative contractions, right? And, and he says, listen and practice. Sometimes, eh, it depends, right? Uh, if you are reading one syllable, um, uh, words or two syllable words, right? For example, we have this listening and let me go ahead and see if I can share the um, the listening with you. Hoy han venido bien callados, chicos, porque andan tan calladitos son. Es martes. You're tired. Están calzaditos. Es martes y el, el cuerpo lo sabe. Ok, ya pasó el lunes, ¿verdad? Así que ya, ya sí. va para abajo. Ok, very good. Ya van para abajo esas energías, pero no. Hay que, hay que animarnos, ¿verdad? Veamos, dime un second. Aquí creo que está. Uh 
One second, guys. One second, sir. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to share it with you. <clears throat> Uh, when it comes to pronunciation, I prefer to have the video, right? Um, instead of having me, right, explaining um, that section. So let me go ahead and share the screen with you. Yeah. Díganme. La presentación de ayer no la ha compartido aún, ¿verdad? No, todavía no. Eh, ayer vimos what's and where, pero no, no, no se las ha compartido. Pero con mucho gusto lo voy a hacer mañana. Tranquilo, lo voy a anotar. Lo que pasa okay. es que hoy ya salí, ajá. Ya salí tarde del, del trabajo. Ya no pude, ya no pude mandarles a veces mensajitos que yo les mando, pero voy a apuntar ahorita. Wait. Un momento. Vale, ya está anotado en mi libreta, así que I won't forget that. Right? Very good. So let's go ahead and um, listen right to the explanation of the um, information I was sharing with you. Sound natural when expressing contractions. Let's get started by analyzing the contractions on this chart. Aren't. Weren't. Don't. Can't. Two syllables. Isn't wasn't, doesn't, didn't. They didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. I don't like coffee and she doesn't like tea. These aren't their swimsuits. They can't swim. He wasn't here yesterday and he isn't here today. A quick tip to follow when expressing contractions is to extend the N. For example, I can't. They weren't. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to listen and repeat the contractions until you feel comfortable pronouncing them. Because they weren't hungry. Okay, guys. So pretty much what I want to point down here is that, uh, well, para empezar, ¿qué es, qué, ¿qué es one syllable in Spanish? What is, ¿qué es eso? Una sílaba. Exacto. ¿Y cómo le llamamos nosotros a esas palabras en español? Monosílabo. Muy bien, exactly. We call them monosílabos, right? So are those uh, sounds or um, are those words that we express or that we say by using just one syllable? Ok, entonces tenemos en la primera, si ustedes se fijan, que tenemos aren't, tenemos weren't, don't, right, tenemos can't. Y luego tenemos en la sección de two syllables, tenemos isn't, wasn't, doesn't, and didn't. Ok, and now the tip that he uh, provides is that whenever we're, um, you know, um, using right contractions negative contractions we, need, we we can go ahead and use a long and sound right and let's listen to the uh, exercise one more time doesn't didn't doesn't didn't they didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry i don't like coffee and she doesn't like tea. These aren't their swimsuits. They can't swim. He wasn't here yesterday, and he isn't here today. A quick tip to follow when expressing contractions is to extend the N. For example... Okay, so that is the tip, right, that he provides to extend the N whenever you're using contractions in the negative form, okay? Now, if you see, it's kind of it's kind of difficult, right, when it comes to the sounds, because if you pay attention to this, if you, you say, pero como así una sílaba, dos sílabas, how, right? And let me continue sharing the screen here. Let's pay attention to the exercise, okay? It says, um, um, I don't know if you can repeat from there, right? But just try to do it for you, in your mind. It says, aren't, aren't, right? Weren't. 
weren't, don't, don't, can't, can't, one syllable. And then you have this two syllable sounds, right? Isn't, wasn't, doesn't, didn't, right? So whenever you are saying, just try to uh, extend that letter N, right? To help you uh, pronounce them correctly. Then if we read the sentences, right? We get they didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. I don't like coffee and she doesn't like tea. They are in their swims. These are in their swimsuits, right? They can't swim. He wasn't here yesterday and he isn't here today, right? So if you see, there's no like difference, ¿verdad? Ni si quieres escuchar la diferencia. ¿Qué es lo que lo, la, la, el, el, el consejo que podemos tomar de esa sección de la, de la plataforma? Is to extend the letter N whenever you're using the negative contractions, okay? Doesn't, didn't, isn't, wasn't, right? So just pay attention to the sound on the letter N, okay? So do you have questions? ¿Hay preguntas acá? Creo que no había ejercicio con respecto a esto, ¿verdad? Nada más era como for you to know, for you to practice. Questions? Preguntas, chicos? No, no. Yo, teacher, um, ¿por qué eh, se dice una sílaba y dos sílabas? Uh, no sé, ahí sí me quedé un poco perdida. Sí, quiere decir de que para decir los que salen donde dice one syllable, usted solo ocupa un sonido. Pero para decir las que están en el segundo, ocupa dos. Por ejemplo, aren't. Aren't. Don't. Don't. Can't. Can't. Weren't. Weren't. And if you pay attention to the second section, it says isn't. Wasn't. Doesn't didn't, right? So when you stand, extend the end, cuando sea la larga la letra L, termina en otra, en otra, en otra sílaba, right? Wasn't, isn't, doesn't, uh, didn't, right? Okay, try to pronounce them. Mm -hmm. Aren't, don't. Mm -hmm. Very good. So if you see, Whenever you um, uh, say or pronounce the one in the first section, you're using only one sound. Utiliza solo una, un, un sonido, okay? Pero para los del lado que está a la par, el de two syllables ocupa dos. Can you notice the difference? Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome, okay? Okay. Now, in when it comes to these guys, uh, all you have to do probably is to practice. I would recommend to watch the video one more time and to listen to the pronunciation of the words, okay? And then to practice it, okay, um, probably five times, right? And then you will be able to hear the difference, right? So pay attention. And para quizás terminar de aclarar la, este, la, la pregunta que ya tenía, voy a ponerlo una vez más. Y esta vez, let's pay attention to the sound, okay? Give me one second. Mm. Let's go ahead and listen to the pronunciation. Aren't. Weren't. Aren't. Give me one Weren't. Contractions. Let's get started by analyzing the contractions on this chart. Aren't. Weren't. Don't. Can't. Two syllables. Isn't. Wasn't. Doesn't. Didn't. They didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. Okay. Aren't. Listen. They didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. Right? So for one, you use two syllables, and for the other one, you use one. Okay? Pero eso sí, chicos, a veces nos resulta un poquito difícil, incluso a mí, ¿verdad? que yo pues trato de escucharlo, trato de practicarlo, etc. Incluso a veces a nosotros se nos hace muy difícil como identificarlos. Pero ¿y por qué es esto? Porque um, 
we're not native speakers, right? No somos hablantes nativos. Entonces, eso, pues, en, 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 en parte afecta. For example, in my case, I have to pay close attention, right? So I can identify. Tengo que poner una atención para ver si yo los identifico también, right? So it's not that you will be able to identify them at once, ¿verdad? Por eso es que hay que poner atención un poquito, ya que como no somos hablantes nativos, nos va a costar identificarlo, ¿verdad? Pero as you could hear, right? At the time they were pronouncing, como ellos lo han pronunciado, okay, you can notice the difference, okay? Let me stop sharing here, and I'll continue here with my presentation, okay? Muy bien. Okay. So that was uh, regarding the um, negative, right? Pronoun um, the negative uh, contractions pronunciation, right? Then also we practice a little bit on the... Um, on the conversation, right, yesterday, y aquí está por la información que yo les guardé para que vean que sí la tenía guardada. Okay, we practiced a little bit uh, yesterday uh, on the um, uh, conversation, right, and uh, also we um, moved, right, and talked a little bit about present simple. Now, ¿qué es lo que quiero rescatar de present simple? Ahora quiero que los unamos todos, ¿verdad? We already know Ya sabemos, ¿verdad? Que whenever we are um, using uh, positive structures, affirmative um, sentences in simple past, we're going to modify the verb, right? If it, is if it is regular, we're going to apply certain rules. If we are using regular verbs, so we need to memorize them and try to remember the simple past of the verb, okay? Then if we are using the negative form, ¿verdad? Si usamos la forma negativa, we said that we use the auxiliary didn't, right? So she didn't uh, attend the conference and then the compliment, ¿verdad? Dijimos que cuando estamos usando un auxiliar, no modificamos nuestros verbos. Siguen tal cual, ¿verdad? Y los dejamos como una forma base, ¿verdad? Sin agregarles ni ponerles nada. Y luego dijimos, right, that whenever we have interrogative or the question form, we are going to use again our auxiliary at the beginning, right? And that we are not going to modify our verb. It's going to be the base form of it, and we're not going to change that, okay? Ahora bien, the question for you is, vamos, hoy sí quisiera pues escucharlos más a ustedes, ¿verdad? And the question is, what did you do yesterday? So guys, I want you to think, I want you to think about uh, the things that you did yesterday. Think about at least five things that you did yesterday, invent. Invent, ¿verdad? No, no, no diga, I was at home, ¿verdad? All day. But invent. Puede inventar. So let's go to the, uh, let me go here. I'm going to open. Voy a abrir una pizarrita. Aquí está. Okay, so this is the question, guys. Vamos a ver. Quiero que se alisten todos, okay? So the question is, oops, sorry. What did you do yesterday? What did you do yesterday, guys? Okay. Now, I will give you my examples, okay? I will give you my examples. So, yesterday, I woke up a little bit, a little bit late, okay? Also, I, um, let me see, I met breakfast, okay? I met breakfast, okay? for my family, okay? And then also later, okay? Okay, later, uh, I, let's see, I had to go to work. I had to go to work, okay? After that, after that, I, uh, let me see, well, I'm going to include my family. We watched. TV, okay, for an hour, okay. Also, I prepared my class for my students, okay. I, pre I prepared the class, ¿verdad? the class for my students, okay. So, guys, uh, pretty much these are some of the things that I did yesterday. I woke up a little late or a little bit late. I made breakfast for my family. Well, actually, we had we had breakfast together. We had breakfast together. Okay. Oops. We had breakfast together, and then I had to go to work. I I mean, we watched T 
TV for an hour in the afternoon, right? In the afternoon. In the afternoon. And I prepared the class for my students, okay? So these are some examples of the things that you could use, right? Ahora bien, váyanse a su lista, váyanse a la lista que yo les di, que yo les compartí. Open it, ábranla, okay? And I want you to think about five things, pero invent, invente, okay? You can say as many things as you want, okay? So let's go ahead and um, get ready, okay? Let me see. Encuentro un, un puerto. A baby's crying. Okay, so let me know if you're ready. Avísenme cuando ya estén listos, okay? And I want to see your hands. Okay, I want you to, I want you to raise your hands if you want to participate. Okay, and I want you to tell me as many things as you can, lo más que pueda, okay, about simple tasks. Because I want to listen to you. Quiero escuchar cómo están usando simple tasks. Quiero escuchar cómo están con esos verbos, verdad, que les mandé. Let me listen to know if, well, thank you, Vasilia. You want to participate. Thank you very much. Tell me, what did you do yesterday? Yesterday, I wrote a letter. Okay, I walk late. No, broke the right. Oh, you wrote, 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 wrote. Uh -huh. a letter. Mm -hmm. I drove a work. Okay. I went to the gym. Mm -hmm. I saw the movie. I drank a milkshake. Excellent, very good, Basilia. Good job, okay. So you were using regular and irregular verbs. Thank you very much. And you were using the structure too, right? Subject verb in complement. Excellent. Who else? ¿Quién más quiere participar? Let's see. Uh -huh. I don't see hands. No veo manitas. What about the rest? Mm -hmm. What about the rest, guys? Me. Mm. Okay, go ahead, Deborah. Thank you very much. Okay, I, yesterday I woke up early. Ah, okay, very good. At 5.30 a.m. I made a player to God and I meditate. Very good. And after that, I took a shower. Uh -huh. and I made a coffee. Uh -huh. And I start the activities of my job uh, at home. Uh -huh. I am tele, and teletrabajo, telejob. <laughs> How do uh -huh. you say? No, actually, okay. work at home. It's work at home. Uh -huh. Work. And, and I was sitting in my desk all day. Oh, okay. Excellent. What a good description you have of your day, Deborah. And actually, I really liked it. <laughs> I really like it because you were able to give some time, you know, for yourself. You said that you woke up early, you meditated, you pray God for the day. Also, you made some coffee. Wow, that sounds a very, very nice um, morning routine. So good job, Deborah. Thank you very much. Dice Anita del Carmen, te, perdón, teacher, tengo problemas con el intro. Ay, bueno, está bien, Anita, no se preocupe. Cuando ya logré ir recuperar la señal, entonces puede participar. Vi una manita levantada, permítanme. Uh, yes, Cecilia, thank you very much. Um, I woke, woke up late. Uh -huh. I had coffee for my breakfast. Very good. I ate KFC for lunch oh. with my friends, for, with my job friends. Oh, delicious, okay. I watched television with my mom mm -hmm. at night. Mm-hmm. And I heard, uh, I heard um, 80s songs. Okay, listen to. I listen to, listen, listen to that 80s song. Wow, I really like your um, your activities for yesterday. 80s song. I love 80s music. Me encanta la música de los 80. 
<laughs> okay, yes, beautiful music, okay? So I listened to 80s songs, okay, or music, ¿verdad? And co-workers, compañeros de trabajo, co-workers. Co-workers, okay. So, mm -hmm. okay. Excellent, Thank good you. job, Cecilia. You're welcome, okay? K KFC, right? Tengo, pero ears, ¿verdad? No comer KFC, okay? Very good. So it sounded delicious. It sounded very interesting. So who else? ¿Quién más? Vamos, eh, dice Flor, Florcita, tell me. Ah, no le escuchamos, Flor. I, I was, I was, uh -huh. visit hospital with a doctor sore throat. Okay, very good. I visited, I visited the doctor. Or I visited the hospital, I'm sorry, you said, right? The hospital. hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so. Mm -hmm. Sore. Throat. <clears throat> okay. So I visited the hospital and saw the doctor to check my throat. Right. Para que chequeara mi garganta, okay? Very good. What else do you do, Florcita? ¿Qué más? Mm -hmm. Uh, in my fam, I am fam my family. Mm -hmm. um, ¿Cómo se dice? Está pendiente de mí. My family. Um, well, no, my family. No sabía cómo decir está pendiente de mí. My family is taking no taking care of me. Sería me están cuidando, ¿verdad? Well, uh -huh. my family is watching now. Quizás sería watching now. Pendiente. Give me one second. <coughs> one second. <coughs> yeah. Well, actually, I just don't, I cannot find a phrase, algo así como estar pendiente. I would say, yo diría más algo así como, eh, well, my family is um, taking care of me, or my family is, you know, um, phoning, right? Or they are calling, right? Just to check on me if I'm okay or not. Están como pendientes, yo diría, they are uh, calling me or they are, Checking right every 30 uh, minutes, right? If I'm okay, cada 30 minutos vienen y me revisan, ver si estoy bien. Okay, I would algo así, because I'm, I don't find something like that. No encuentro algo así, pero si lo encuentro, se lo comparto. Okay. Thank you, teacher. You're very welcome. <coughs> Thank you very much, Rosita. This is uh, watching this, uh huh. Watching, uh, watch out. Right, también, watch out, pero ya es como más negativo, como watch out, pero se va a caer, cuidado. Pendiente. Eh, well, actually, only those are the ones that may be pending. But pending is, si yo digo, pending es otra cosa, es algo que está pendiente, un documento, por ejemplo. Eh, to stay in charge of your health. Aquí hay otra frase, in charge of your health, ¿verdad? Cargo de tu salud. Eh, Oh, uh, be vigilant, right? Vigilant, okay? Regarding, okay? También estar como al pendiente. Bueno, esas son las frases que he encontrado. Pero sí, que dice, nunca, lo había, nunca me había puesto a pensar how to, how to say that. But thank you very much, Flor. And then I have another hand. Tengo otra mano levantada. Give me one second. I have Adriana, Emperatriz. Thank you very much. Um, sería, I went to supermarket. Okay. I visited my grandparents. Okay. I called my friend in the night. Mm -hmm. I studied for exam. Okay. So um, do you have an exam? Pardon? Do you have an exam? Do you exam? No. Have, no. Oh, okay, okay. Very <laughs> good. Thank you, uh-huh. What else? I painting a landscape. Oh, okay, very good. Eso sería todo. 
Okay, thank you very much, Adriana. Very good, uh, very good use of verbs. You used a lot of regular verbs. Okay, thank you very much. Now, another volunteer, volunteer to share with us your sentences. Thank you, Sarai. Go ahead. <laughs> Sarai, me escucha. Very good. Okay, Tell me. Uh, I watch the. No, I watch it. Uh -huh. My baby's clothes. ¿Cómo se dice ropa? Oh, Here. yes, my baby's clothes. Uh -huh. Clothes. Okay. Yes. I watch it. My baby's clothes. I work from home. I saw a movie with my children. Okay, very good. I work to the movie. Uh, perdón, to the market. Um, I cook it dinner. I cook dinner. Very good. Solamente. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Sarai. Very good, guys. So actually, um, my recommendation is to practice as much as you can when it comes to simple tasks. Practicar mucho, mucho el pasado. Y teacher, cuánto yo sé que mis oraciones están correctas, pues cuando yo sigo el patrón, verdad? Um, subject, verb, and complement. Okay. Subject, verb, and complement. Okay. Now, uh, also the uh, was and where form, verdad? I was at home yesterday. Um, I was uh, in the church yesterday morning, right? They were, they were in the park yesterday morning, etc. So remember this. La diferencia que tenemos, chicos, entre los todos esos verbos que acabamos de mencionar, verdad? Y el verbo to be, es que el verbo to be tiene una característica bien importante. Y es que el verbo to be es independiente. El solito se hace positivo, negativo y pregunta. En cambio, todos los demás verbos, ¿verdad? Todos los demás verbos, ellos necesitan ayuda. ¿Y cuál es esa ayuda que necesitan? Bueno, necesitan a didn't para las oraciones negativas. Y necesitan a did para las preguntas. En cambio, verb be, el verbo to be, no necesita nada. El solito es independiente, es positivo. Eh, se puede convertir en negativo y en pregunta al mismo tiempo. ¿Ok? Dígame, Araceli. Ok, teacher. Um, I went to the park with my family. Very good. I okay. went to visit my parents. Y yesterday I took piano lesson. And I watched television all afternoon. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I cooked it with my mom. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for those uh, examples, Araceli. Very kind. What about you, Stella? Thank you. Thank you. I went to work in the morning. Mm -hmm. I cooked pizza for my son. Mm -hmm. We drank. We drink coffee with my mommy. Drank. We drank. Drank. Mm -hmm. We drank coffee with my mommy. Okay, excellent, very good. I love coffee. Okay, in my case, I really <laughs> love you. coffee. Yeah, so I really like coffee. I generally I drink probably two cups a day. Y alguna veces este me paso de la raya and I drink three or four cups a day. Ahí sí, a la teacher anda bien, este, bien contenta, verdad? Ya con cuatro tazas de café. Okay, so thank you very much. Las energías. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Sometimes we need it, right? Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Estela, for that, uh, for the examples. Now, let's go ahead and continue, guys. Let me just erase here. And I'm going to um, take the, this off. Delete my drawings. I'm going to close. Muy bien. Bueno, coming back, regresando chicos siempre a lo que es eh, el simple pass of uh, the verb be. Ahorita vamos a ver quizás un contraste o la diferencia, ¿verdad? Que tenemos entre el presente, ¿verdad? Y el pasado. Eh, tenemos eh, an example there. So we got today and we got yesterday, right? Today and yesterday. So today Adam is at work. Okay, he's at the office. But yesterday, ¿verdad? Típico de los lunes, ¿verdad? Salimos y el, el lunes llegamos todos cansados. Eh, but yesterday he wasn't at the office. He was at the beach, right? So take a look at the difference, right? In the first section, we used the verb be in present, is, right? Down below, we have wasn't, right? So yesterday he wasn't at the office. He was at the beach, right? Now, 
in the affirmative form, okay, I have, um, this is the, uh, the, the um, present form, ¿verdad? La forma de, en presente, ¿verdad? I use, I am, he is, she is, it is. And then for the negative form, I am not, he's not, it is not. Give me one second. Eh, ya de nuevo, ah, ok, gracias Anita por avisarnos. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens with the with the with the form in the past, right? Well, it changes a little bit. ¿verdad? Dijimos que tenemos I was, he was, she was, and it was. Ya no es is y tampoco ya no es am, ¿verdad? And then I have uh, in the negative form. I was not, or the contraction, I wasn't, he was not, she was not, or it was not, right? So it depends, right, in the way you want to use it. Esos son, digamos, los primeros subjects que nosotros hablamos, ¿verdad? Que es I, he, she, it, and singular nouns. Cuando estamos usando I, he, she, it, and singular nouns, we're going to use that form, was or wasn't. Was or wasn't, muy bien. Now, what happens when I'm using the other set of subject pronouns, okay? What happens when I use this one? ¿Qué sucede para cuando ya me paso a we, you, and they? Bueno, en presente yo sé que es we are, you are, and they are. And if it is the negative form, we are not, you're not, and they're not, okay? Now, when I want to use it in the past form, okay, I'm going to use it as where, well, as where. Give me one second. Se fue en presente siempre. Um, one moment. We were. Se lo puse en presente entonces. Muy bien, ahora sí, ok. So, in the negative form and the affirmative form, we're going to have it like this, right? I say, we were, you were, they were, ok. If it is a negative form, we were not, you were not, and they were not, ok. Now, guys, let's think of some examples, ok. Let's think of some examples and let's go back here. Voy a regresarme acá. ¿verdad? No se preocupen que eso sí, yo se los mando. Mañana ya lo anoté, ¿verdad? Hoy lo siento, pero no, no tuve chancecita. Les prometo que ya mañana sí les envío la información. Vamos a ver. Let's have some examples. So, eh, I can say today I am happy. Today I am happy. And yesterday, ¿qué podemos decir? Today I am very happy. And yesterday, I was sad, for example, right? I was sad. Today I'm happy. Yesterday I was sad, right? I can say today, today I am um, in the English class, okay? Yesterday or in the morning, in the morning I was at work, okay? I'm going to add the examples here in the chat, okay? Today, bueno, vamos a abrir la pizarrita, wait. Vamos a ver. Texto. Ahí está. Ok. So we're going to have it like this. I can say today, right? Today I am happy. Pero yesterday I was sad. Ok. I can say today I am in my English class, right? Today I am in my English class. And yesterday, oops, yesterday I was at work. Estaba en el trabajo, okay? I can say it also today, right? Today, um, I am tired, right? Today I am tired. Yesterday, I was very energetic. 
very, very energetic. Ahí estaba, pero súper, ¿verdad? Súper eh, lleno de energía, ¿ok? So, you see, today I'm very happy, but yesterday I was sad. Today I am in my English class. Yesterday I was at work. Today I'm very tired. Yesterday I was very energetic, ¿ok? Entonces, that's uh, how, the way we're going to use uh, the simple pass of the verb be, ¿ok? ¿Hay alguna pregunta, chicos? Question? ¿No hay preguntas? No, teacher. No yet. No. Ok, muy bien. So, let me go ahead and delete here. Eh, quizás le voy a tomar el screenshot para que quede, les quede después esto aquí. No sé dónde ponerlo para que salga todo. <laughs> Acá. Aquí lo voy a poner. Give me one moment. Teacher, no, una dígame. pregunta. Dígame. Cuando utiliza, por ejemplo, en la segunda, en la segunda oración de Yesterday I was at work. Eh, cuando utiliza at y cuando utiliza el to. To. But to es este, como para, ¿verdad? En este caso, at es cuando usted expresa eh, ubicación, ¿verdad? Cuando usted quiere expresar uh -huh. ubicación es at, también cuando queremos expresar tiempo, ¿verdad? I yes. can say, ajá, uh -huh. let me see. ¿Qué hace okay. acá? I'm going to give you okay. some examples. You're welcome. Eh, let me see. Acá, ok. So I can say, I am at work, ¿verdad? Ubicación. I can say I am, or I was, but I was at the university, university yesterday, okay? Or I was at church yesterday, okay? Es solo para expresar ubicación, ¿verdad? And also I can say I was in my house, oops, I was in my house at a a.m. Okay, tiempo. I um, was in my English class, English class at 8 p.m. No, vamos a poner lo que es su trabajo, ¿no? at 6 p.m. I was in my English class at 6 p.m. Okay, entonces whenever you use at, puede ser ya sea para ubicación o para expresar tiempo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cualquiera de las dos. Okay. Very good. Gracias. You're welcome. Let me erase here. All my drawings. Clear my drawings. I'm going to close. Muy bien. Now, what happens now with um, uh, when it comes to the um, to the affirmative form? Ya lo vimos, ¿verdad? In the negative form. Teacher, pero ¿y cuando voy a hacer preguntas? Bueno, lo tenemos acá. Y es, pues, la parte de la que, en la que hemos venido trabajando, ¿verdad? Es eh, ese pedacito donde estaba, where were you born? Were you born in El Salvador? Were you born in the United States, right? Eh, where were your parents born, etc. Right? So you can ask all those questions. And if you see, there is a, just, there is a switch. Por eso es que decimos nosotros que el verb be, ¿verdad? El verb be. Es, es independiente, porque si ustedes se fijan, al principio el solito era afirmativo. I was at home. Y luego se convirtió en negativo. I wasn't in the park, or I wasn't at the park. Y ahora se convierte en pregunta. Was I at home yesterday? Was he in English class yesterday? Was she at church yesterday? Eh, was it on the table? Estaba en la mesa, ¿verdad? Um, Where uh, we in our English class yesterday? Were you in your house yesterday? Were they in the park yesterday, right? Entonces, si ustedes se fijan, viene de afirmativo, negativo y pregunta, okay? Entonces, we have to be very careful, right? Cuando hacemos la pregunta, entonces ahí solo hay un switch, ¿verdad? Ahí solo hay un switch y es de que el, el, el sujeto cambia de posición con el verbo to be, okay? Esa es como la, la diferencia que tenemos, okay? ¿Hay alguna pregunta? ¿Questions? No, question. No, teacher. Muy bien, está claro. Muy bien. So, let's go ahead and I'll work on an exercise. Vamos a hacer un ejercicio, ¿ok? Eso yo se lo voy a mandar, no se preocupe, ¿ok? 
vamos a ver. It says complete the conversation with was, wasn't, weren't, or weren't. Okay, vamos a ver. What do you think? Let's go ahead and read the conversation first. I'm going to give you one minute. Piense un minutito. Read the sentences and then you tell me which is, which is going to be the one that you pick. Give me one second. Oh my goodness. I dropped the pencil and I can't find it. I'm going to use this one. Okay, so think about your options. Think about what are the ones that you consider uh, that belong there, okay? Now, number one, it says space, James in class yesterday afternoon, right? Then it says, yes, he, he, he what? What do you think is the first uh, option that we need there? Was. was. Oh, okay, uh, very good. Muy bien. Was James in class yesterday afternoon? Was. He was. Yes, yes he was. 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 Very good. Okay, what about the second one? Well, where? Where? Where, where are you at home last night? Very good. Where are you at home last night? No. I weren't. I Are you I sure? Ah, muy bien. I wasn't at the supermarket. No, I wasn't. I was at the supermarket. Very good. Ok, now guys. Este, hay que tener mucho cuidado cuando usamos en, uh, en este caso I, ¿verdad? Remember, si es I, es was or wasn't. Ok, para este uso, ¿verdad? Es importante. Ok, what about the next one? Where? 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 Were the kids with you? No. No, they weren't. No, they weren't, right? Feliz anda la mamá. Were the kids with you? No, they weren't. They were at the movie. They were at the movie. They were at the movies. Ya quisiéramos, but that's a break. So, were the kids with you? No, right? I'm on a break. Okay, this is me time, okay? Uh, and then it says, no, they weren't. Actually, they were at the movies, okay? So you see, that's the way you're going to use the verb and it's very simple, it's being simple, okay? So all what you have to do is to pay attention to the subject pronoun that you're using, and then you're going to um, um, use the correct, um, you know, uh, in this case, of verb in past. Vamos a hacer un ejemplo más, okay? Un ejercicio más. Let's see. Now, let's go ahead and read the sentence, okay? It says, uh, were you late for work yesterday morning? And the answer is short, right? And the answer is short. Vamos a hacer la primera, lo voy a hacer con ustedes, okay? Si dice yes, ¿qué vamos a responder? Were you late uh, to work yesterday morning? Si digo yes, ¿cuál es la respuesta? Yes. Yes, where. Yes, where. No, como dijimos. Yes, I was. Ah, I was. muy bien. Yes, I was. I y was. luego tengo the bus and late. So, ¿qué queremos decirle a la persona? Mm -mm. Were you late for work yesterday morning? No. Yes, I was. ¿Verdad? Sí, lo siento. ¿verdad? ¿Y por qué razón? The bus. The bus. The bus. Late. Sí. ¿Y el verbi? Sí. The bus late. The bus was late. Ah, muy I bien. Was late. The bus was late. Mm. El bus llegó tarde, por eso llegué tarde yo. Hola. Were you late for work yesterday morning? Yes, I was. The bus the was bus, late. Bus late. Uh -huh. So let's go ahead and think about number two, okay? It okay. says, were you at the supermarket last night? Were you at the supermarket last night? Si es no, que voy a responder. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't. Ah, I wasn't. Wasn't. Okay. Oh, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Right? No, I wasn't. Okay? ¿Por qué? Que si no estaba en el supermarket, entonces... I was at work. I was at work. Muy bien. Were you at the supermarket <clears throat> last night? No, I wasn't. I was at work. Right? Oh, qué interesante, ¿verdad? So... Then number three, were you and Amanda at the movies last night? 
Were you and Amanda at the movies last night? ¿Cómo vamos a responder a esa pregunta? No. No, I was no, no, we weren't. We were. No, we weren't. No, we weren't. No, we weren't. We weren't. We weren't. No, no, porque we aren't es presente. We Ajá. Um, no, we weren't. Very good. It's no, we weren't. Because actually they're asking us, right? Nos preguntan a nosotras, right? Were you and Amanda at the movies last night? And we were like, no, no, we weren't, right? Okay, ¿dónde estábamos entonces? We were in the we 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 museum. Excellent. We were in a museum, right? We were in a museum. Very good. So, was Susan with you at the bookstore last week? No. No, she wasn't. She wasn't. Very good. No, she wasn't. Entonces, ¿dónde estaba ella? She was she at was school. At she, was she was at school. She was at school, right? So if she was not with me at the bookstore, where was she? So she was at school, right? Were you and Harold at the movie yesterday? Yes. We are. Yes. Yes. We were. We were. We were. We were. We were. We were. Vaya, si dice where? yes, no puedo usar weren't, porque weren't, yeah. negativo. Yes, 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 he yes, he was. No, porque es where you and Harold, usted y Carol. Yes, we were. Muy bien. Yes, It's, yes we were. Yes, we were. Nosotros estamos en the movie yesterday. Uh, yes, we were. Was, uh, we were. Uh, we were. The movie were. The movie was boring. The movie were boring. The movie, pero the movie no puede ser where, porque the movie is it. Y con the it, movie was, 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 was boring. The movie was boring. The movie was boring. Very good. The movie was boring. <laughs> Ahí es donde yo les digo que hay que poner atención cuando es third person. Porque yo puedo decir the movie, the movie where, ah, pero yo sé que el pronombre para the movie is it. Y sé que con it voy a usar was. 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 Muy bien. Entonces, the movie was, was boring. boring. Uh -huh. Boring es un adjetivo, es aburrido. ¿verdad? The movie was boring. Okay. Now, what about the last question? Was Ronald at work yesterday? Was Ronald at work yesterday? Yes. Yes, yes he, he was. was. He was. He was. He was. Yes, he was. He was right? He was. But, but. He was there. He only there. Was. Escuché por ahí la respuesta correcta. But he was there. He, he was, was there. there. Muy bien. Uh, Él estuvo allí, pero solo la mañana, ¿verdad? Yes, he was there. But he was there only in the morning. Okay. Entonces, chicos, you see, it's very simple, right? To use verb be. Es bien sencillo. Again, all what you have to do is to pay attention to the subject pronoun that you're using, okay? Y acordándonos siempre, con I, yo no uso weren't. En este caso, en este caso en particular, con I, yo uso, yo uso, perdón, I was or I wasn't, ¿verdad? Sí, y también otra cosa, cuando ustedes, por ejemplo, ven, vieron el ejemplo, were you and Amanda, were you and Amanda, tú y Amanda, o sea, as, nosotros, ¿ok? Y también me llamó la atención el, el número 5 cuando yo dije, Were you and Harold at the movie? Y ustedes dijeron, yes, he was. Pero es where you and Harold. O sea, ustedes, ¿verdad? En este caso, we, yes, we were. But the movie was boring. Okay? Entonces, as you can see, that's the use of uh, verb be. Nada más también chequear la parte de las preguntas, ¿verdad? La parte de las preguntas que este, hay que tenerla clara también. ¿Verdad? En este caso, déjeme irme para acá. Eh, es esta, ¿verdad? Hay que tener, recordar siempre, ¿verdad? Was, where, were you at the movies yesterday? Um, was she in the class yesterday, right? Uh, were they, were they in the supermarket yesterday? Or were, were they at the park yesterday, right? Entonces, uh, we have just to pay attention to those uh, subject pronouns that we're going to use. 
y pues yo creo que ya con eso ya queda más claro, ¿verdad? Había uno, unos ejercicios en la plataforma, espero los hayan podido completar. Igual si no lo han hecho, pues los invito a que sigan este, trabajando en la plataforma. Recuerden, chicos, que este viernes es como el deadline. Deadlines es este, la fecha ya de entrega final, ¿verdad? Eh, para que puedan pues estar ya registrados para el siguiente curso, ¿verdad? Y que ya tengan pues eh, completada su plataforma al menos, este, bueno, al 100% al, con un score de por lo menos 80. Así que cualquier pregunta pues eh, vamos a traerla para acá, ¿verdad? Y pues mañana es el día que me toca compartir con ustedes lo que hemos visto en la clase y también voy a compartir quizás otros links. Ya había compartido creo yo un par pero vamos a compartir otra vez eh, más links con Was and Where y lo voy a anotar. ¿Y, si el, no, dígame. ¿y el viernes vamos a tener clase? Eh, no, mi niña, el viernes no. Hasta el jueves. Parece que es hasta el jueves. Ah, okay. El jueves vamos a tener eh, la, la parte del examen final, que es donde vemos lo del examen final y el uh -huh. repaso final, eh, pero okay. sería el jueves. Gracias. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Bueno, ya saben. Bueno, chicos, entonces hasta aquí llego yo. Thank you very much for joining. Muchas gracias por acompañarme. Ánimo, si sé que están cansaditos. Ha sido un día pesado, pero thank you very much for joining. Thank you, thank you. 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 Thank